Hello, I am Hanna Legev, a translator from Ukraine, working between Ukrainian and English. Together with my fellow translator Alana Jennings, I'm guest curating the Spotlight series for Joe, focused on writing from Ukraine and the Ukrainian diaspora. This February, we mark the second anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine and the decade since Russia brutally violated international law by occupying Crimea and unleashing war in the east of our country. This reading series consists of two parts. In the first one, titled War, we will showcase the works of contemporary Ukrainian poets who are now soldiers, paramedics and volunteers. Tragically, two of them, Viktoria Amelina and Maxim Kravtsov, were murdered by Russia. Viktoria was killed last summer in a missile strike when she was in eastern Ukraine, accompanying a group of journalists who documented war crimes. She was 37. Maxim served in the Ukrainian armed forces and was killed on the front line shortly before his 34th birthday. The second part of the series is titled Resilience and will come out on the Jill channel later in March. It will introduce you to another cohort of Ukrainian poets documenting the experience of staying resilient in the face of existential threat. At the opening of Berlin Literary Festival last year, Ukrainian poet Helena Kruk, who is also featured in our series, said, quote, The war forms an abyss between those who have experienced it and those who stay at a distance. With each day, I find it harder to explain to outsiders how the war feels to us here from the inside. Our very intention to explain dwindles. Our language loses clarity. Poetry is not for us anymore. When your husband is fighting at the war, your relatives suffer horrible occupation in the Kherson region and your other relatives live under a constant shelling in the Kharkiv region while you must consider air raid alerts because a missile can hit and kill you, it's hardly possible to remain above it all. In such a case, poetry takes on peculiar forms of either spontaneous prayers, sparing testimony, lament or even a curse upon the enemy. These are not the forms of poetry the modern European culture is used to. They are ritualistic and functional, way too primeval in their emotion, way too subjective, pathetic and intolerant. Olena and I, and the translators we invited to read for the series, see it as our goal to narrow this abyss of incomprehension that Helena Kruk is talking about. By translating urgent wartime poetry into English, we want to share the voices testifying about Ukrainian experience with the audience all over the world. Let this reading series be a gesture of empathy, understanding and hope. I would like to wrap up this introductory video with my translation of a poem by Katarina Michalitsina. Katarina is a brilliant Ukrainian poet, author of children's books, editor and translator. She is also actively engaged in volunteering. Katarina cares deeply about the ongoing ecocide in Ukraine and the fate of animals suffering in the territories ravaged by war. The poem I will read, The Fish Speaks, is dedicated to Polina Raiko, a Ukrainian naive painter who was 69 when she took up a paintbrush. Her only canvas was the walls of her modest village home, but in just six years she created a national treasure and became an icon of folk art in southern Ukraine. That house, decorated with images inspired by the rich natural life of the floodplains that backed on to Raikwa's garden, became the casualty of the Kahoka Dam collapse in summer 2023. I will first read the original text in Ukrainian and then my translation. Ryba говорит: Тут стільки мертвих, що і моря не стане, аби всіх їх прийняти. Птаха говорить: Скільки б не було голосу мого, Від смеркання і до сходу зірниць, тих, що просвітло в кінці тунелю, я не зможу їх відспівати. Човен говорить, скільки б не плив, не перевезу, не доправлю нікого до вирію, крутитимуся на місці, бо коріння мене тут тримає, за них і за себе. Міна говорить, я чорнорота, ото зірвуся. А хата пливе і слухає, а на боках у неї звірі прадивні, а на стриху у неї колись калюлі. А на шибках у неї хустки квітчасті. Рогач плуга обійняв і коною підперся, До скрині із глеками зазирає, А в глеках тих січ на денці, Тракайські мури і сміх вишневий. Пливе хата, колишиться, А у її легенях водиця чорна, 
а у її утробі людська і божа. Риба говорить, птаха говорить, човен говорить, міна говорить, найголосніше, і тільки хата мовчить. Слухає, як набухають між їхніх слів і кринки смерті. The fish speaks. To Polina Raikwa's house and all the people and animals, homes and gardens, that perished in the aftermath of the Kahovka Dam destruction. The fish speaks. There are so many dead here that the sea will be too small to take them all. The bird speaks. However strong my voice is, it won't last to sing for all their funerals, from dusk to the rise of morning stars, the vance signaling light at the end of the tunnel. The boat speaks. For however long I sail, I will ferry none of them across to the great beyond. I will only spin around in circles. My roots anchor me here, for their sake and for my own. The landmine speaks. I'm foul-mouthed and will soon explode. And the house drifts and listens, and in her sides a marvelous beasts, and in her attic a cradle, rockaby, and in her windows flowery headscarves, an oven fork hugging a plow rests on an icon, peering into a chest full of jugs, and at the bottom of those jugs is the Cossack siege, the truck eye walls, and the cherry laughter. Swaying the house drifts, and in her lungs is the black water, and in her womb is the human and the divine. The fish speaks, the bird speaks, the boat speaks, the landmine speaks, the loudest. Only the house keeps silent. She listens how the caviar of death swells between their words. Thank you for listening and for your solidarity with Ukraine.